You're listening to the Aesthetically Speaking Podcast, presented by Next Tech. Welcome back to the Aesthetically Speaking Podcast, presented by Next Tech. I'm Robin Into, and today we have Ben Bordeaux with us, our SVP of Financial Services. Ben, welcome. Pleasure to be here. You know, you've been in financial technology for oh, a few years, I think. Tell us a little bit about your background, how, you know, you're at Next Tech now, which is healthcare technology. Tell us, you know, a little bit about your journey. Yeah, certainly. I think I think I've I've had a bit of an interesting one in that I actually started life as a lawyer of all things. Mm. But I was presented with an opportunity in Australia actually with a with a colleague to to jump into the world of fintech about 15 years ago and I haven't really really looked back. I think I've certainly found my passion. Over the last 5 to 6 years, I've I've even found I guess a, a deeper niche in practice management fintech specifically, which is an area that is just full of tremendous innovation at the moment. So previously was working with a company called Clio, which is effectively next tech, but for lawyers. And Ah. and it's amazing to see some of the similarities in in, in opportunities and challenges that those respective professions present present to one another. But needless to say, I'm I'm incredibly excited to to have joined next tech and to be leading out really this this evolution of of financial services and and the payments business for for next tech. Yeah, you know, okay, let's, let's get into it. So we talk about payments and we talk about the evolution of payments and how we see it embedded in software systems now. A lot is going on in this space. Just broadly speaking, you've seen a lot of change. Give us a little history and journey and, and a little bit of understanding about what that looks like then and now and where you think the future is. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. So over the last... I would say, you know, one, one to two decades, realistically, at this point in time, we have seen a tremendous amount of, of innovation within the, the financial technology or, or sort of fintech space that really has allowed for the advancement of the, the patient experience, the operational efficiency that practices can get access to, that can make a meaningful difference to the bottom line of whatever that business is. And of course, that, is, that includes healthcare and, and next tech. And so if, if I had to bucket this, I think certainly it's an oversimplification, but over the last decade or two, we've seen financial platforms start to reduce the barriers to entry for technology platforms like next tech to build really interesting and bespoke solutions for their respective vertical or specialty. So previously, the way in which a provider or, or, or a healthcare physician would look to accept payments is that they would usually you know, go to their, their legacy financial institution. They'd go to their bank that was providing them with their bank accounts and with their credit cards. Right. But over time, we started to see an evolution where these, these financial technology companies were able to bring more bespoke, more specialized payment solutions uh, to these physicians to solve additional problems that perhaps these larger financial and legacy institutions weren't able to, to sort of uh, accommodate. And, and, and that, that sort of solution, so like FinTech 2.0 is, is what it's sometimes referred to as, you know, drove again a, a tremendous amount of, of, of sort of innovation and focus in this area. But ultimately, I think what we've seen over the last five years is this next evolution where now, all of the industry leading verticalized technology businesses like Nextech, like Clio, like Shopify, for instance, mm. are really trying to build out their own you know, native financial service solutions, then a native payment solutions. And the reason that we want to do this is because that we can go a layer deeper and add a tremendous amount of new, new value, again, new operational efficiency, improved practice and patient experiences that someone like a traditional financial institution who's just giving you a terminal to stick on top of your mm. countertop really can't, can't sort of like accomplish or deliver. And what this, what this ultimately turns into for the practice and, and the patients is a better overall experience, which is something that, you know, certainly top of mind for us. So, you know, Ben, one of the things that I have found, not just at this show, but historically with practices, is that we think about an all-in-one system. We think about all the things that we bring to, to provide value, not just to the practice, but what they can do to, to extend that to their patient. But yet, I hear practices say to me, I don't care that my staff have to go through extra clicks, that they have to do additional steps. They lean more into the patient experience. 
patient experience, patient experience, patient experience. We've heard it all day long. We know that's the focus. We know that people are driving towards that. But I, I'm going to go back to the question, why would it be valuable to think about embedded payments as being a safety for you as a practice? Let alone, okay, so you don't care about the fact that your staff have extra clicks. Okay, fine. But what are the other risks that come with not having something embedded directly into your system? So that, that, that's a great question, but I'm going to answer that second with respect to what are the risks that, that you know, should, we think should be top of mind for a physician. But I want to go back to, to the notion that you said in relation to having the, the physician focused on actually delivering the healthcare services, like the medical services. Mm-hmm. And the, oftentimes it's the back office start who are having to deal with some of the business complexity and operational complexity that can occur when you're having to live across multiple different systems. And I think that that's certainly something that, that is top of mind for us. And we're really seeing the industry move towards a direction where everyone is looking for platform consolidation and, simpl- and, and, and sort of efficiency. And this might not always be top of mind for a physician because again, let's be honest, these individuals are incredibly busy. And to your earlier comment, you know, their superpower is, is, is being able to spend time with patients and being able to spend time in the operating room to deliver the, you know, the, the, the healthcare services that, right. that they need. Right. Whereas the practice manager is oftentimes the one who's feeling the brunt of, of the, you know, and a slightly inefficient service. Mm-hmm. And where this can start to actually hurt the practice as a whole is the fact that one, you might be impacting your patient experience where they're having to spend more time at either check in or check out in order to, to you know, interact with, with your practice. And that has a risk of, of actually impacting your brand. Secondly, you've got an operational efficiency element within your practice that again, as a physician, you may not see because it might only be a minute, a minute more to reconcile mm-hmm. a transaction. It might only be three additional hours or five additional hours at the end of a month in order to reconcile your books and and look to close your accounts with your accounting practice. But over time and as your practice scales, these things can really, really add up. And ultimately, if you're not adopting these new process improvements, these new technologies, and, and taking advantage of the investments that companies like Next Tech are making to, to in, in the likes of Next Tech payments, to make these seamless financial journeys, you're ultimately starting to fall behind your competition because this is the direction that, that the industry is moving across pretty much every single verticalized specialty or verticalized technology platform that, that I see. And ultimately, it's just we can deliver such a richer experience across both the patient and the practice journey that, that I really don't see many reasons why practitioners shouldn't be looking to move in this direction. Well, you know, I, I also think about there's so many things that you could really apply to what you just said. So just let's just talk about differentiation. So a practice is striving to always be different. How am I unique? You can't just lean in and say, I'm board certified any longer and be unique. So people start to talk about the patient experience and what am I doing to really stand out? Well, part of that patient experience comes back to, are you offering them the flexibility to get the financing or pay the way that they need to? But more importantly, are you doing it their convenience? Absolutely. And convenience doesn't just mean their wallet, but it also means when. And so I think about, you know, a lot of times practices don't even offer online scheduling because they're afraid that it's going to disrupt their schedule or they are not concerned or they're more concerned about, well, I've got to make sure I have, you know, the ability to collect deposits. I go back to, this is the whole component of building something embedded in your system because payments touches every piece of it. Every part of the journey, that is all part of it. And if we think that it's going to be easier or harder for our staff, yeah, that's important, but it's also the most important part of it is thinking about that patient. And ultimately, they're going to go someplace else because you didn't give them what they needed. And that convenience is a big part of it. That's exactly it. I I talk a lot with my team about the notion of meeting the patients where they are. We have seen tectonic shifts in the expectations 
that a patient will, will, will expect when they're engaging with any different type of service provider. Mm. You know, gone are the days where, you know, you could just say, hey, you know, this is the way in which I, as the practitioner, you know, demand to be paid. Or when there was just frankly, only cash and check payment options available to these different providers. You know, with the advent of, of obviously, you know, iPhones, digital wallets, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the step function changes in the ability to gain access to patient financing to help, you know, spread out your ability mm-hmm. to access, so, you know, spread out those payments so you can get access to more treatments. If you're not adopting best in class and, and meeting your patient's experiences, again, you're inviting a world whereby a, a provider down the road, mm-hmm. uh, you know, might be looking to, 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 to solve for that patient's problem and they might think about going in a different direction. Well, yeah, you, you've got the generational influence too. You've got those patients or prospects, depends upon your, you know, your collective effort here, that they're used to going up and just using their, their watch to just pay for something. I mean, they, I mean, I talk to physicians all the time. They're like, yeah, my kids just have access to my credit cards it's attached to their Apple Pay. I don't have to worry about giving them a credit card. But then, you know, I mean, everything is about the technologi- technological changes around the payments industry and what's happening there and the effort it provides and convenience for people. And what, what I think is really exciting here is that it's actually opening up new patient engagement opportunities. And so mm-hmm. what, what I mean by that is, again, the, the traditional, let's say, engagement with a physician would be that you would come in, you would have a consultation to discuss your needs, a quote would be presented mm-hmm. at some point in time in the future, you would then have the procedure, and then you would look to, to, to make payment. Now we can actually engineer a a financial journey for both the patient and the practice that starts to streamline and make that feel like a richer experience. So you can allow for a patient to prepay for a consultation. Uh, You can allow for a patient to pay over time with something like the Next Tech Payments payment plan solution. We've obviously spoken about about patient financing. And so, you know, what what we see is best in class, and we've got some amazing physicians on our platform who have really set up this incredible white glove structure, is a patient is able to now come in, fill out their paperwork, and immediately just put their credit card, for instance, Mm -hmm. on file. Then at the end of a a consultation, a treatment, a conversation, they don't even need to pull out their, their, their wallet or their purse. They can just say, thank you so much, doctor, walk out the door, and everything is conducted behind the scenes. That's a really great experience that I think creates not only brand rapport, but that repeat customer. Well, it also opens up the opportunity for people to be more willing to spend because it just seems less painful. They're still paying for it at the end of the day. I think about that Amazon model where your credit card is stored. You basically go in and pick what you want, put it in your basket, you click a button, and of course, if, I, if I'm prime, I'm going to get it the next day, hopefully, or even later that day. They've just reduced all the barrier to make it easy and as easy as possible. We need to kind of take a, a page from their playbook and think about it because a lot of times in healthcare, we tend to be falling behind. We just don't stay up with the things that are expected. And in plastic surgery, we know that we're supposed to be the leaders in patient experience and how we deliver on that comes across in many ways. And I think that... This is an important conversation. It's an important component of a practice. I want to shift for a minute. I want to talk about, we've talked about the patient experience, and I think that that's key. I want to go back and think about risk in a practice. I cannot even remember or count the number of times I've been involved in practices that have had embezzlement or a theft. I mean, the stories and the creativity, that's what amazes me. I'm like, people come up with the most creative ways to, th- to steal from practices. And we're not just talking about just like stealing product out of a practice. We're talking about things like having patients write checks to the provider. Well, patients don't necessarily know the structure of a practice. They don't know that that provider is really an employee and is getting paid by the practice. They might think that that is a contractor and that they should be doing that. I tell you right now, It's happened, and we're talking about a quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars in loss that is gone. These practices cannot get that back. And every single time I've been party to that and seen that happen, I go back to systems and processes that were broken because they had too many ways to have workarounds. They were just, there was breaks in the process. 
And some of those breaks were because they just didn't build into it as much integration as they could. Yeah, so I think that's a that's a great point, Robin, and ultimately goes back to the conversation we were having earlier about the benefits of platform consolidation and why having a system of record as the as that base for your entire business is so incredibly valuable and important. Because if you have multiple disparate systems that aren't like designed from the ground up to talk to one another, you're inviting this sort of risk to enter into your business. And there are, again, there are innocent examples of this where sometimes, you know, you could just accidentally forget to reconcile a transaction, for instance. That's fine. Of course, it's going to happen. Everyone is human, but that takes additional time for you to need to go in and, and ultimately correct, correct that error. But I think, again, what you started to highlight, which is a reality in, in a number of different businesses, is that there are bad actors that, that exist mm-hmm. within, within this space. And so obviously as a prudent business owner, we wanna be taking every reasonable step that we can in order to mitigate those risks, mm-hmm. to, to design a solution that, that takes away from that opportunity for someone to do something that not only could damage your practice, your brand, but also you know, potentially you know, really, really financially harm either a, a, a patient or the practice. Well, I also think about the perspective of, you know, risk is also in, you're trying to put controls in place. And for example, you want to do, as a physician, you know, you want to be in the OR. That's your, that's where your love is. That's what you went to school. You didn't go to school and get all this training to be a business manager. And I get that. But at the end of the day, so you're trying to be prudent and you're trying to be, you know, you put those controls in place. So you do the banking, you go to the bank. Well, okay, that's time, it's energy. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of give you a little bit of a story about a practice where the physician was, you know, most of it was credit card transactions. Okay, normal, great. But there's still patients that pay by check. It's, it's accepted. You know, we still have checks. I don't remember the last time I wrote a check, though, to be honest with you. But <laughs> needless to say, okay, people still write checks. And you want to take those to the bank in a timely fashion. But in this particular practice, a physician was waiting months and months before he would go to the bank because it wasn't like the primary component of what he needed to pay his bills. He had all that other revenue. Well, he would wait so long that by the time he went to the bank, the first patient's of all, it not was, gonna be happy. Yes, they were he had exactly. some real and guess what? Those patients in many cases were so upset that he had to turn around and lose the money. Yep. Because the patients didn't do it. And I think about Again, going back to there's technology to solve for this. Why are we running from it? Why are we making this difficult? Absolutely. And again, I think if we're honest with ourselves, this probably happens a lot more than the the you know the physicians and the practice right. managers are wanting. They're listening to us and they're probably nodding their head. Yep, that's it's me. That's like, me. I've 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 been there absolutely. And so one of the other concepts that, that we talk about and we, we we think about a lot on the next tech payment side is the idea of of speed to revenue because again time is money and every day that you don't have those funds in your bank account mm-hmm. essentially you know you are you are for all intents and purposes out of pocket so. You know, checks checks were an incredible invention back in the day, and and you know they still are used in in a number right. of different a number of different you know day to day business practices. But certainly, we have seen their use case uh, diminish over over time. And again, I think that there is a a, a cultural and a, and a customary element to to that in terms of the familiarity of new payment methods mm-hmm. like digital wallets that are going to supplant that. But again, there are also limitations with respect to check usage, for instance, that you highlight, such as the time it can take for that check to be processed uh, and, and, and to be cleared. I, I also I'll address something that, that I have heard in industry and I don't necessarily think is accurate, where people think that checks are safer than, than online no. and digital payments. And, and, and yeah, I, just, I, I don't think that that's an appropriate viewpoint insofar as Checks can also be charged back or returned just like a, a credit card transaction. That's right. And that can present a lot of risk to, to your financial, uh, you know, to the financial health of, of your business. So, again, I'm not saying that, that every, uh, my recommendation is not that every practice, you know, tears up, tears up their, their ability to, to serve checks. Comes back to this notion of, of certainly looking to, to manage and meet your patients, you know, where they are in terms of their financial journey and how they want to pay but certainly, we should be thinking about the health of a the sorry the the 
operational efficiency of a practice and speed to revenue as a consideration of what are the payment methods that you want to prioritize at least and look to to have your staff build build processes around. I'm going to shift gears for a minute. I want to talk about PCI compliance. Now, there's a lot of people out there that just don't understand what that is and what it means. And I can tell you right now, a lot of practices still write credit card numbers down and they write they or they type them into the patient notes notes tab. And they're not they're not clearly concerned about the risk that that brings. Again, stories that I could tell about people that have gone in and they've used patient social security numbers or they've taken those credit card numbers and used them and there's been fraudulent activity. So let's talk about PCI compliance. I think we need a basic premise on what it is because a lot of people don't understand it. So let's not assume. And, and then let's talk about where we, we want that to be solved. How do we want that to be best managed? So Robin, the analogy I'll use with PCI compliance is that it is effectively HIPAA, but for the payments industry. So mm -hmm. the, the, the high level version of, of what we need to do as a, a PCI compliant organization or what a PCI compliant organization needs to do is ensure that there are safeguards in place to protect the credit card information and bank account information and payment information of people who are essentially accepting, accepting payments. And so, and the reason for that, of course, is that we, we don't want to have a situation whereby our patient's payment information is being exposed, is being stolen, is being used for inappropriate means. Not only is that going to be a horrible experience for, for a patient, but also it's going to have tremendous negative implications to a practice in the event that, that you know, the breach, the leak of this financial data occurred you know, uh, you know, at, 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 the, at the medical practitioner's offices. So something that transparently, I think, again, still happens far too much in our industry and which, you know, again, I'm sure a lot of our listeners here will be thinking, <laughs> oh gosh, I, I think I might still be doing this from time to time, is where we're doing things like writing down credit card information on post-it notes because you're mm -hmm. on the phone and, and, and you're multitasking. Like that is is arguably a, a breach of, of PCI compliance. And I think actually this can go so far as even to being a breach of HIPAA compliance. Yeah. So again, this actually comes back to the idea of the value of having a healthcare specific payment solution like Next Tech Payments that is built for the ground up for healthcare payments and the, uh, the healthcare financial workflow. And we wanna remove the opportunity or the need for this risk to be exposed wherever possible. I also think about this from the standpoint but that we are required as a healthcare company to be compliant across many different spectrums. You know, PCI is one component of it. And it's standard in the industry. I think about QuickBooks. If you accept credit cards through QuickBooks, there's PCI compliance. So it's not just a next tech requirement. It's a standard in the industry. We're just, and we're certainly compliant with that and we afford it. But I want to talk about a component that we haven't really touched on, which is the administrative piece of everything related to financials within a practice. And, you know, the unsung hero a lot of times is the practice manager who does Absolutely. the month end recon reconciliation, who has to dig out of that mess of paperwork, so to speak, really, did I balance? Did I get the money all in the bank? What what I put into my practice management system, did it actually go to the bank? What I put in the, you know, the credit card processing, did it actually go to the practice management software? And did all of these things match up? And so when I look at my statement, you know, how much time am I spending at the end of the month reconciling? But there's a lot of people out there that don't even reconcile anymore and may not even know how to do it. I'll be very frank and honest about that one. I've seen that one. But the practices that I've seen that do do it, I think about, you know, again, physicians are not as worried about their efficiencies. They just want it done. You know, they think, okay, it's done. I don't care. But those practice managers, they're just looking for something to be straightforward and easy and, you know, getting that all, you know, all their ducks in a row, so to speak, so that it just is easy to manage. It's ideal for them. It is. And I don't know of a profession that is juggling more balls or wearing more hats mm. than the practice manager. 
You know, they are so incredibly time poor. They're getting pulled in, you know, 10 different directions at any given time. So again, any way that we can engineer a solution that can give them back time to either, you know, help the practice grow, help the patient get a higher level of service or answer some of the questions that perhaps the physician has, again, is I think is a no brainer. These are the thing, these are the problems that we want to be, we, you know, we, we want to be, be solving for. And again, this, this ultimately comes down to what I refer to as the, the, the business of, of, of medicine. And we are, again, practice management has come so far in, in the last decade or two with respect to you know, new cloud, cloud-based solution, solutions, you know, expansion into, into patient engagement, of course, the billing payments and collections automations. But obviously, we're just at the start of what is going to be an absolutely transformational period over the coming years as we think about the impacts of, of, of AI mm. across the, the financial workflows as, as well. So this is something that, that I'm, uh, myself and the team, are thinking about, are monitoring a lot, and we're, looking, we're, we're incredibly excited to see you know, the, the innovation and the direction that this takes. Yeah, it is exciting. I, I look forward to see where we go next. What is it, FinTech 3.0? <laughs> Four, I, I think I've lost count. 4.0, 100.0, right, it's, right, it's coming. All right. all right, Ben. We've talked a lot about payments, risk. We've talked about efficiencies, et cetera. If you were to leave one pearl for listeners, what would that be? Ooh, that's a hard question. Too many things. I, <laughs> there's, there's a lot. I, I think something that I always invite or suggest is, is a really healthy habit for practice owners and, and certainly physicians to do on a regular occurrence is go and look at your financial statements. And sorry, and when I say financial statements, I mean specifically your payment statements. Look at what is actually, what are you actually paying for and what are you receiving in terms of the value? Because again, with the innovation and the, the changes in this landscape over time, what would you might have signed up to pay for X years ago or decades ago in mm -hmm. some instances, I think may not necessarily be, be what you think you're paying for or what you understand you're paying for today. And so, again, oftentimes we'll see a, a lot of different complicated lines on your statement that you don't necessarily un understand. So unpack right. those and try to get closer to understand what value is your provider providing you today and compare that against what now exists within the market. Are you getting the, the, you know, the richest set of, of features that is truly helping your practice run as, as efficiently as it can, whilst also delivering a, a truly great patient experience? Yeah, I think that's a great, great takeaway because a lot of times we just lean into, well, this is my cost, but what is the value it's bringing back to me and to my patients? Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Robin. I really appreciate the time. Thanks for listening to Aesthetically Speaking, the podcast where beauty meets business, presented by Next Tech. Follow and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Links to the resources mentioned on this podcast are available in your show notes. For more information about Next Tech, visit nexttech.com. Or to learn more about TouchMD, go to touchmd.com. Aesthetically Speaking is a production of The Axis. T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.